good morning students good morning to all on last day we have studied about the balance of payment disequilibrium and the types of balance of payment disequilibrium and at last we have studied the causes for balance of payment disequilibrium so today also just we will remain what we have studied on last day and we will go to the new concepts yesterday we have studied the causes for balance of payment disequilibrium so just we will remain so what are the causes are there for arising the balance of payment disequilibrium so first one of the causes is cyclical fluctuations the cyclical disequilibrium in different countries is caused by their cyclical fluctuations their basis and magnitude so all the nations will have and will face the trade cycles basis of trade cycles so we have studied already the different type of the basis of trade cycles are there so the depressions and recovery and boom and depressions so when the two countries are being in the different type of the basis of trade cycles and in different countries also will have the different magnitude in the trade cycles suppose when india are being in the boom depressions it will never earning more income than other countries and some other countries also can able to earning more income when they are being in the boom situations so not only that now which one countries are being in boom situations and the another one of the trade countries are being in the depressions base so it will never come to the equilibrium of balance of payment so these cyclical fluctuations always will be the reasons of the balance of payment disequilibrium the world trade shrinks during depressions while trade flourishes during prosperity so throughout the world all the nations are being as a same basis so the different nations will be in their different basis so it will also one of the reasons for the balance of payment disequilibrium next is structural changes the structural disequilibrium is caused by the structural changes brought by huge development and investment programs in the developing economies so normally the developing economies always spent more income to develop their structural arrangement so such economies may have high propensity to import for want of capital for rapid industrialization while export may not be boosted up the extent so when they are spending more income more their income to arranging the structural changes it cannot be able to boost up to the export so it will be in the situation of import so the structural changes also will be as one of the reasons to arranging the balance of payment this equilibrium next is development expenditures the development disequilibrium is caused by rapid economic development which results in economic in which results in income and the price effect so income and the price effect will bring some of the development disequilibrium so there is more price in one country is and the income also is increased or the income also is not increased means so the balance of payment price disequilibrium will be created the less developed countries in the early stage of development are not self sufficient so when they are going to moving from one st- one stage to another of the stage so it will never able to export increasing their export so it will always depending upon the another nations only so income savings and investment are absolutely low so if any of the nations are not having the sufficient level of the savings and income are invested this nations unable to increase their export so they depend upon the developed countries for import of commodities capital and technology 
so there is some of the balance of payment disequilibrium will be arise next consumerism so consumerism also is one of the reasons for arising the balance of payment disequilibrium the balance of payment position of a country is adversely affected by a huge increase to consumption even in the developing countries or the underdeveloped countries there is no demand the consumers or the public will want to consuming more commodities so when they having the behavior this nations will forced to import the countries from the another one of the nations so the consumerism the huge consumerism considered by the consumer also one of the reasons to arising the balance of payment disequilibrium next is demonstration effect demonstration effect mean the people one who is want to live like a another one's life now in developing countries so many of the middle class peoples and the poor peoples also want to live their life like a another ones for example the indian peoples want to live their life like a foreigners peoples those who commodities are used by the foreigners also want to used by the developing countries peoples when they are liking when they are being like that so the middle class peoples also will take more effort to consuming that commodities so in this time if any of the nations are not able to produce the demanded commodity it have to import from another one of the nations next borrowing the international borrowing and investment may cause a deficit in the balance of payment when the international borrowing is heavy a country's balance of payment will be adverse since it repays loan the interest so as we studied already all the nations are having the power and the rights to borrowing the money and financial assist from the world bank or the world financial organizations so after borrowed the money within the particular time it has to repay the money to the financial organizations along with the in the state so in this time if it is not able to repay the money to the financial organizations again it has to be need of borrowing the money from any one of the other financial organizations so when they are borrowing more money and if they are not able to repay the same money to the financial organizations it has to be in the need of importing the commodities from another nations and it will never increasing the power of export the commodities so the balance of payment disequilibrium will be arised by over borrowing next technological backwardness the technological backwardness the people are unable to use the energy available with them so even some of the peoples or some of the nations are having some of the technological they will never use the technological and that backward technological also one of the reasons because the developed nations will have the improved technological to produce any of the commodities and because of that they will produce more commodities and in the same time some of the developing countries are the underdeveloped countries are unable to adopt the technologicals and it will never increase the supply because of that it has to be forced in the situation of importing the commodities from other other nations next global politics so under the global politics the rich countries need to sell their weapons to promote their economy and generate the employment so hence the wars between countries are simulated in order to win the wars for example the america wants to generate the employment and sell the weapons to the developing nations it will create and stimulate the war conditions or war situations with another two nations so in the situations any of the nations want to get the own to the war and it will be import the weapons from the weapon rich countries so using the yearnings and creating trade deficit so because of that also 
the balance of payment disequilibrium will be arise. So the 10 causes are there. So yesterday also I gave the same study portions. I believe you all studied. Next, measures to correct balance of payment disequilibrium. So the balance of payment disequilibrium, disequilibrium will be affected the economy as harmless. So we must take in some of the effort to correcting the balance of payment disequilibrium. So this balance of payment disequilibrium is broadly classified as two types. First one is automatic correction and the deliberate misses. And the automatic corrections is the market forces of demand and supply are allowed to play freely. The equilibrium will be automatically restored in course of time. So normally we have studied the market forces, the demand and the supply. If you are allowed the demand and the supply as freely, automatically this market force will come to the, uh, will bring to the equilibrium. So under the free exchange rate system, the automatic adjustment of the balance of payment can take place through changes in the variables like price, interest, income and capital flows. So the price, interest, income and capital flows will change the balance of payment disequilibrium. So under the automatic corrections, what are the measures are taken by the government mean? First one is price adjustment. As a result of foreign exchange outflow from a deficit country to a surplus country, there will be a fall in the money supply in the deficit country and increase in the money supply in the surplus countries. So when we are decreasing the price of your commodities in the deficit countries, balance of payment deficit countries are decreasing the price for their commodities, the another countries will come to our nations to export. Normally if the price for commodity is very low, the demand will be increased, right? So like that, for example, in developing countries, in our price for the commodities in our countries is very low, and other countries also will want to export from our nations. So the price adjustment also will be one of the measures to correct the balance of payment this will be here. Next, interest rate adjustment. The contraction or expansion of money supply resulting from the balance of payment deficit or surplus leads to a rise or fall in the interest rate. A rise in interest rate in the deficit country will encourage investors to withdraw their funds from abroad and invest their home countries. So normally, if the interest rate is increased by the bank, so the public will going to get the interest to deposit the bank. Like that, if the interest rates are increased in the deficit balance of payment countries, the other countries want to make the direct investment on our countries. So on the basis of rate of interest only, the foreign capital, sorry, the foreign funds and the foreign direct investment will come into our nations. So because of that also, the balance of payment will come to correct. Next, income adjustment. So a nation with the payment surplus will experience rising income, which will increase imports and thereafter equilibrium is restored in balance of payment. So income of our nations are going to decrease. Our public also will reduce the purchasing power and the decide to getting the consumerism. The consumerism also will going to reduced and the purchasing power also will be reduced. So the demand for that commodities will be reduced. So if there is no demand for the domestic market, so we will relieve from the import from other nations. So in these situations, we can focus to increasing the export to the another one of the nations. Then automatically the balance of payment disequilibrium will be eliminated. Next, capital flows. The changes in the interest rate consequent to the balance of payment disequilibrium will encourage capital flows from the surplus nation to deficit nation, helping restoration of balance of payment equilibrium. The capital 
flows also will be come to our nations when we are reducing the interest rate so changes in the interest rate also will encouraging the capital flows from the surplus balance of payment nations so the four messes will automatically correct the balance of payment distribution next deliberate messes by the manually or by the effort of the government or the central bank of india or the nations if you are doing by deliberate some of the messes are there so under the deliberate messes also we can classified as a monetary messes and trade messes and miscellaneous messes so under the monetary messes the three messes are there to bringing the control in the balance of payment distribution under monetary messes first one of the messes is monetary contractions the high domestic price level is responsible for high imports and low exports in order to control inflation the central monetary authority controls credit as a result the prices come down and the export increases so the governments are implementing the monetary measures or the monetary authority so in order to controlling the inflation the central monetary authority controls the credit so when we are controls the credit the prices come down and the export increases so when we are bringing the credit as a control the circulation of money will be less in our nations so the automatically the prices also will come down and export increases if the prices come down mean what will happen so the peoples will want to purchase any of the commodities from our nation itself so we can produce more commodities after fulfill the domestic demand so the surplus commodities commodities also going to the export to another one of the nations however if credit is controlled investment will decline production will go down so price will increase so this is the cause for confusion between the government and the reserve bank of india so when we are bringing the monetary measures so the credit will come to the control but in the same time investment also will be less so without increment or without high investment we cannot increase in the supply of commodities so first is the two types of the problem is there when we are bringing the credit as the control the surplus of money will come down and the poor people and the people also will less the purchasing power and otherwise they will consuming any of the commodities in this domestic market but in the same time so the surplus of money and the supply of money also will decrease the in the entrepreneurs or the production side also so we cannot produce more supply so if you want to bring the credit under the control we have to taking the monetary measures but this is also affect the investment level so the government will confuse you to bring the monetary measures next is devaluations so devaluations means deliberately reduction of the official rate at which domestic currency is exchanged for another currency in other words the devaluation refers to a reduction in the external value of the currency in the terms of other currencies for instance instead of 70 rupees per american dollar making 80 rupees per american dollar so normally the value of money so normally for example the value of money is 80 rupees one 80 rupees is equal to one american dollar means so the indian government deliberately will reduce the value of money from 80 rupees to 70 rupees now if the american want to purchasing the if the indian peoples want to purchasing the 1 dollar so they have to we have to pay the 80 rupees 
So first the 1 rupee is equal to 8 rupees. 1 rupees is equal to 70 rupees means after devalued the devaluation of the money now 1 dollar is equal to the 8 rupees. So in order to increasing the export so all the nations will come to our nations. A country with the fundamental disequilibrium in the balance of payments may devalue the, its currency in order to stimulate its export and discourage imports to correct the disequilibrium. The devaluation makes exports cheaper and import dearer. That means making Indian goods cheaper for foreigners and foreign goods costlier for Indians. So if we uh, devalue the money, the foreigners can easily purchase the Indian commodities because the price for the Indian commodities may be very low when we are compared to the exchange rate. So at the same time, the Indian people will never want to purchase the foreigners good because the price for that foreigners good is may very high. So the devaluation also one of the measures to correcting the balance of payment rate. Next exchange control. The exchange control means the state intervention in the forex market. It is a popular method employed to influence the balance of payment position of a country. Under the exchange control, the government or central bank assumes complete control over the foreign exchange reserves and the earnings of the countries. So the Reserve Bank of India only will have the power to control the exchange rate. Now by taking any of the measures, the Reserve Bank of India adopt the good exchange rate or there is more barriers to exchanging the rate we can bring the and we can correct the balance of payment disequilibrium. Next trade measures. The trade measures include measures to promote exports and to reduce the imports. So under the trade measures, the two types of measures are there. One is the export promotion, next import control. The export may be encouraged by reducing or abolishing export duties. So when we are reducing the export, for the purpose of promote the export, we have to reduce or abolishing the export duties. The export may be encouraged by the reducing or abolishing the export duties. So the government can reduce or abolish the export duties. Next, providing the export subsidy. So those who are entrepreneurs, entrepreneurs, those who are involved in this international trade and export. So the government must be providing some of the export subsidy. So all the people will come into the export trade. Next, encouraging export production by giving monetary or fiscal or physical institutional incentives. So when we are giving some of the incentives to the promotional entrepreneurs or the export entrepreneurs, he will get more interest to increasing the export. Next, import control. When we are control the import, whatever we can do. So imports may be controlled by imposing or enhancing import duties. So suppose if the governments are increased the, the import duties, the importer will reduce the amount of import. Next to restricting imports through import quotas. So the import quotas also is there. Some of the amount will be reduced by the government. Suppose, suppose if any of the importers are importing 10 tons of commodity from another nation it means the amount will be reduced by the government from 10 ton units to 5 ton units. Next to licensing and even prohibiting of import. For involving the import trade, some of the licenses are there. So the license also have to provide by the government. 
Suppose the government stopped to providing the license to start at the import trade. So the import will come to the country. Next is some of the other measures also is there. By stopped or induced the other measures also, we can bring the balance of payment distribution. First one is foreign loans. So if the governments are not ready or not get the interest to from the foreign financial organizations or if they are not having the interest to borrowing the money from the foreign financial institutions so the import will come to the country. Next encouraging foreign investment. So many of the foreign directors will come to our nations to make the investment. Suppose if the governments are engaging the foreign investment that is the foreigners so they will come to our nations and we will get the good investment. Next development of tourism. Development of tourism means so we have to attract the foreign tourists. So we if we are if we have the best and the effective tourism situations and the tourism place only the foreigners will come to our nations. So because of that nations also we will get good foreign exchange. Next import substitutions. So when we are providing some of the substitutions for the import goods, we have to produce some of the goods in our nation also. So the import also will get reduced. Okay students, if you have any doubt, please ask me. This miscellaneous messages also, 4 or 5 messages are there. Just you take the automatic corrections and the correction of balance of payment is equilibrium as your study portions. Okay, thank you.